Virginia project. I don't know if Mr. Sarles knows that any better than I. But you will maintain it when it's up as up once it's at, up and running. At some point, the the built system will be turned over to Metro, and Metro will operate it okay. and maintain it. Uh, Mr. Sarles, can you uh, inject anything? Uh, I, I can't help him out much with the ridership. That hasn't been my focus in the first few weeks. It's really been on safety and state of repair. I will add one thing, though. Uh, while the funding is from Virginia, and I guess the airport's authority for the construction, ultimately with WMATA taking over the operations and maintenance, we all have to keep in mind that there will have to be more funds made available for operations and main maintenance. Uh, so that it is maintaining a state of good repair from the very get-go and not let, left to deteriorate. Let me, let me also ask uh, about a, a, another concern, the perceived ability to keep up uh, with safety issues. Um, we cannot add ridership on this new line without being able to ensure their safety. How can we be sure uh, that the current backlog of maintenance needs affecting the metro system will not affect the uh, the Dulles extension. Mr. Sars, you want to take a stab at it? Or maybe I should hear from Ms. Jeter. She may have something to say about it. The existing system has to be brought back up to a state of good repair, and the money has to be made available to do that. Um, if you ultimately you don't bring the existing system up to the state of good repair, it's going to affect any new new construction. Ms. Jeter, anything to add about a new line coming on and being able to maintain it and make it safe? I think with a new line, you have probably less worries than you do with old lines. Um, with a new line coming on, um, you know the equipment is new; it works like it's supposed to, and and everything is done according to plan. Um, it's only when the lines become aged and, and older that you have more problems. Um, I honestly, from the operators and knowing them, I don't believe that if WMATA, if WMATA takes steps immediately, that should not be a concern, Mr. Clay. It should not be a concern on whether or not um, the, the lines are going to act effectively or whether um, WMATA can effectively run new lines. I know they can do that, um, but they do have to make some changes quickly. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sarles, although you have had only a short time in your, in your uh, current role as interim general manager uh, for the system, uh, your testimony states that you have worked in public transit for 40 years. Uh, from your, your perspective, do you believe that uh, uh, the agency's general managers have enough authority uh, and enforcement power? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay, do you believe that the uh, general managers are armed with enough information on a daily basis to make informed decisions? I believe that the uh, systems, information systems at WMATA have to be uh, improved significantly. Uh, safety is an example uh, where the uh, incident reporting uh, is not systematically kept. There are uh, efforts underway and we hope this summer to have a system in place that can systematically record all that incident information. So to answer your question, is, there's work to be done in that area. Well, thank you so much for your for the panel's response. I yield back. I thank you, Chair. gentlemen. Um, and by the way, with respect to the gentleman's question on uh, Rails to Dulles, um, it's a $5.5 billion project. It is proceeding smartly. It's under construction as we speak. Uh, it's important to note that the original metro system was built with 80-20 federal money. 80% of the construction was financed by the federal government. When Rail to Dulles is completed, 16% of the cost will be borne by the federal government. If you want to see a dramatic retreat, in terms of federal funding for transit in the construction area, Rail to Dulles is a great example. First time we ever talked about Rail to Dulles in a federal document was 1962. Wow. Forty-seven years later, we, su we signed the full funding grant agreement, which I guess is warp speed in the federal context. And, and, Mr. and Mr. Chairman, that, that really highlights the point that the federal government depends yes. 
quite a bit on this system, and they, right. they should also have a To the share. premier airport in the nation's capital, essentially the federal government has said, you think it's a good idea, local government, you pay for it. And it's entirely borne by Virginia entities, including the airports authority, who have to figure out how to pay for this. Well, perhaps we can find something to, yep. to uh, And I think it's important Virginia. to point Mr. Sarles and Benj Mr. Benjamin made. Once the metro system accepts the fully constructed line, then again, the local jurisdictions, Ms. Ms. Norton's, uh, mine, Mr. Ben Hollins, we bear the full subsidy cost of bringing that into the system. The federal government bears zero responsibility, which is the problem I've got with the current system. Um, let me ask Mr. Sarles and Mr. Benjamin. Uh, it has been suggested that the real problem with Metro is mismanagement and organization and communication. It really isn't a matter of resources. Mr. Sarles, welcome. I know you're new, but I'd welcome your and Mr. Benjamin's take on that. Is that true, that really it's not the whole question of safety and performance really isn't a question of resources? First impressions, three weeks, Yeah, um, is that it's a combination of the two. I think that when you have an organization that maybe has not had the full amount of resources available to it to spend on state of good repair, it begins to have an effect on the employees and the management in terms of the ability to uh, really um, do th what they believe is necessary. Um, then you add on top of that the fact that there have been a number of changes in leadership. You've, you're losing uh, people who um, have 30 years experience, you know, getting ready to retire, not necessarily replaced. One of the first things I'm doing is trying to just fill the holes in the organization uh, where we've lost that experience, we've lost that leadership, uh, to create a foundation again to build it back into the organization it should be. Mr. Benjamin. I would echo uh, Mr. Searle's comment that it isn't one or the other, it's really both. Uh, clearly, if we have not made the investments that we need to make in replacing our infrastructure and our, our equipment, uh, that is going to have an effect on safety. Uh, on the other hand, we also have uh, a clear problem with our safety culture. We do not live safety from the general manager all the way down to the last track worker and operator. It's something that needs to be improved. Clearly also our communication needs to be improved. So we have to be working in both areas and neither one by itself will be sufficient. Can I ask you each and briefly, uh, is it a fair proposition though to say what's missing at the table in terms of subsidies, operating subsidies on a day-to-day -day basis is federal dollars? I, uh, I certainly agree that additional sources of funding would be very, very good and having the federal government uh, participate by adding funding uh, would s tend to make some of the decisions such as the ones we have right now an awful lot easier. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I think we have to recognize the uniqueness of the relationship. This is not Wyoming uh, or, you know, I mean, this is the nation's capital. Um, Ms. Jeter, uh, would you say that uh, personnel cuts might have some impact over time on safety and efficiency and operational uh, issues uh, and that uh, those uh, personnel cuts uh, are all about saving money? Yes. Yes, I would. I think that any time you make uh, not only personnel cuts but severe service cuts, you're weakening your system. Um, and. Would you say that all of that's related to the issue of resources? Yes. And I do agree that there needs to be operating money. Mr. Bassett, uh, one of the critiques about uh, in the past, uh, especially in a series of Washington Post stories, was that your organization, um, A, sort of lacks teeth, uh, doesn't really have any binding powers over, over the safety operations of Metro, and that um, almost consistently Metro has denied you and your colleagues and uh, entities uh, uh, controlled by you access to the system in a timely fashion whereby you could detect or report on uh, or make recommendations about potential safety violations. What is your take on that crit critique? 
I think the FTA administrator did an, an excellent job uh, outlining the regulatory framework under which we operate earlier today and the uh, limitations we face in being able to regulate uh, a rail transit system, which are very similar to the regulatory limitations that uh, most other state safety oversight agencies face, so I don't believe we're unique in that regard. Um, in regards to WMATA not permitting access to the Tri-State Oversight Committee's um, uh, auditors, uh, that was really an issue that revolved around our ability to access the live right-of-way. We were attempting to conduct uh, an audit on whether or not uh, the authority was complying with its track worker safety protection rules. And uh, while it, it was covered in the media, um, I am happy to note that through increased coordination with uh, both the Board of Directors and WMATA leadership, that issue has been satisfactorily resolved. And we were, in fact, able to go out, complete the audit, and our audit was released on our web page in December, um, noting a number of issues and deficiencies in terms of gaps between operating practices, uh, what was, what is, or operating practices and what was written in the rule book. Um, and so, I, while I, I believe that's a very significant concern, I think, uh, coordination between our groups has addressed that, and the, the proof is in the proverbial pudding of the audit we were able to generate. I thank you. My time is up. Um, the gentlelady from the District of Columbia is again recognized by five minutes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I want to join you in the notion of operating subsidies, and I want to also note what it took for you to get the rail line to Dulles. And I, wanna, I don't want anybody to leave the, the table with raised expectations. It took us seven years even to get the thing authorized over here. It took us, uh, we, could, we didn't get the first $150 million out, and I'm convinced we wouldn't have gotten it out if the people hadn't been killed. So as mu much as it is fair, particularly given the utter dependence of the federal government and the way in which Metro is running out of money, I don't want anybody to leave this table, go back to their <laughs> jurisdictions and say, uh, even the Congress thinks we ought to be, have operating uh, subsidies. I can tell you this that the entire region does, but uh, most of the Congress didn't even think that we should be paying for capital spending even after we ground it year after year into their heads that we were talking about federal employees. Oh. Look, uh, you have all testified that, is lo that there should be an independent uh, talk. My question was, was a follow-up, simply said, would, the, um, would, would, would that mean, I'm calling it by another name, the Metro Safety Commission. Mr. Benjamin, uh, would, uh, you see, the problem is I'm dealing with the people who would be regulated. We don't have anybody at the table who is truly independent. Uh, and in order for there to be a commission, somebody would have to put in a proposal at the next session of the legislatures for a commission. And I can tell you one thing, when we told them to put in a proposal for, that, for the states to get their share to match our $150 million, it even took them some time to do that. D.C. did it right away. It took uh, uh, Maryland, Virginia, two or three years to do it. And already we've been waiting a full year after people were killed. And Ms. Jeta is right, after employees had been killed for 10 years before that. So, so I'd like to see a Metro Commission, if we're going to have one, or independent talk, call it what you want to, come through the respective state legislatures this coming legislative season. Does anyone see any reason why that should not occur? Let me put it that way, without asking you to <laughs> have about someone regulate you. Any of you see any reason why that should not occur? Um, could I ask I, you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sauls, uh, the lives were lost in 1970s vintage cars. Um, you only get $150 million per year from the government. Is all of that money being used to replace those cars that went up like an accordion whereas the somewhat later cars were, no, no one was, uh, that was behind it, no one was, was killed. Uh, and uh, is, is, does that mean that the entire 150 million per year is going to cars, or, or when will the cars, those 1970s cars, be gone? Uh, first, to answer your question about, will the $150 million every year go solely to the cars, the answer to that is no. In addition to uh, paying for the replacement of the 1,000 series cars, it'll also go to basic state of good repair, tracks, signals, that sort of thing. Um, it's the time it takes, and we're about ready to recommend to the board uh, very shortly that we award the contract. Um, it takes 
three and a half years, three to three and a half years to get the first cars. That's just the nature of the industry because they have to be designed. They have to, the pilot cars have to come out. They have to be thoroughly tested. And then, you know, manufacturing starts. So the cars haven't even been manufactured that we're going to buy? No, ma'am. They're not sitting on the line waiting to come, and we've got another three-year wait on cars that should have been out of service decades ago. Um, uh, Ms. I do want to say, Ms. Jeter, how much I appreciate what the union did. It is the union that suggested, made a common sense suggestion, but it is a suggestion that came out of the union's experience that at least those 1970s cars not be made the caboose and the front end and when I asked the NTSB at hearings we had earlier why they hadn't made that common sense uh, suggestion, they replied that, well, you know, we, 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 try to, we try to make suggestions for what is the perfect solution. Uh, the committee that has, has, is, is designing the legislation that is now, frankly, waiting to go to the floor for metro system safety throughout the United States uh, has taken what happened. Uh, with respect to Metro, and, now, and, and we now are requiring the NTSB not to give us, as they did for 10 years, the most costly suggestions, knowing full well that WMATA did not have the money, rather than using their expertise also to give, uh, to give uh, uh, interim suggestions that might have saved lives. Uh, that's why I respect, Ms. Jeter, the testimony of the uh, union, because you do know from, from everyday experience what uh, this system uh, needs. Um, you seem to believe um, that the WMATA board is uh, a central part of the problem. But if we were not to have this WMATA board with all these jurisdictions having a say, have you thought about what kind of system we would replace it with since, after all, they're all putting a lot of money into this system each year? Let me say this. You know, I know that the board, the WMATA board, is necessary because of the three jurisdictional type of governance that we have. I understand that they are necessary. I question their role, and the reason why I question their role is simple. We have had probably, what, six or seven general managers since the deaths began, um, and it has not stopped. I don't see a line item in the budget anywhere. Uh, that talks to safety or specifically says that this is for safety. We don't have any budget line items there. So when individuals, and I'm frustrated because where individuals sit and they come in front of you and they talk about what they want to do and all the good things that are supposed to happen, when we go back and we watch it every day, it does not happen. And I think that that board has a direct responsibility to make sure that that occurs, and it has not happened. Is there anyone else who wishes to address that question because the time of the gentlelady has expired? I would just I like to say with regard to what Jackie just mentioned that uh, when we discuss with the board tomorrow uh, the revised budget, um, I specifically am putting money in there for safety-related issues both on the operating and capital side. Could I also, Mr. Uh, Albert, if I may, um, you know, I'm uh, I don't ha the the Riders Advisory Council doesn't have a, a, a position about the board uh, governance specifically. My personal opinion is that I think that while uh, changes might be uh, useful, I think that that's not not really going to get at the heart of the issues. When we look at, for example, the safety and something speaking to that talk quest the talk questions from earlier that Ms. Norton was making, um, the board was very surprised to find out that Metro had not permitted the talk access to the tracks and they immediately jumped in and took strong action to ask the talk to bring to them any issues uh, that might have that might come up where Metro would deny them access to something in the future. Um, I think that that uh, is sort of reveals two things that trouble me. One is the sort of general lack of transparency from the authority in the past about what's going on within it as far as this, these issues. And secondly, I'm a little bit baffled that the, the talk sort of went for several months being stymied and uh, didn't actually tell the board members or tell the public. And it wasn't really until the Washington Post sort of found it out through FOIA requests that, that anything happened. And um, 
you know, I know there may be legal, you know, restrictions on what they can do and that sort of thing, but it would seem that we need the talk to at least feel free if they're, you know, feeling like something is really wrong to jump up and down and tell, you know, the board, the press, you know, their friends, whatever, you know, there's something wrong here. Uh, likewise, um, you know, it was good to hear that Mr. Sarles was interested in, it was uh, promising to have some metrics that would be revealed to the riders. I think that from the point of view of the riding public, we still don't really know what steps Metro is going to take to fix things. There's a lot of information that people don't have about what is going wrong. And I think that that maybe is why there's some frustration that I perceive from you as well, that you know, what, what exactly do we need to do to fix this? What's the problem here? I think we need that transparency into information. And um, I don't think the board is, is necessarily restricting it. Uh, except maybe with the gun uh, report issue, which I would like to see public as well. But, but generally, uh, some board members tell me that they don't have a lot of this information either. Sometimes they are frustrated that they can't get it. Thank you. Mr. Bassett, will you? If I could just uh, briefly address the, the, the transparency aspect of Mr. Alpert's um, uh, comments. It is... Uh, a significant priority for our executive leadership to ensure that the talk going forward is transparent and accountable. Um, after the July hearing of last year and uh, Ms. Norton's comments, we were able to secure website space on the DC DOT uh, webpage. Uh, we're now working on establishing an independent webpage that's solely for the talk, so you won't have to go through um, a, an agency webpage. And I think it's it's been a, a significant um, improvement over the last few months uh, that we've been able to coordinate so closely with uh, both with our executive leadership uh, at our home agencies and as well as with uh, with the board and the WMATA executive team. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I thank the gentlelady. Um, I want to thank our distinguished panel of witnesses. Uh, without objection, the record shall be left open for seven days so that members may submit information for the record. And without objection, um, I'll enter this binder of hearing documents into the committee record. The committee stands adjourned.